Brett is an the intellectual grandson of B.F. Skinner. Not that's always going to be easy, but it's, you know, the easiest that it can be. Right. Um, so, you know, the same way we expect our learners to do things that are effective and efficient for them, we have to do the same thing with staff. So being able to simplify whatever it is we're asking them to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I found in public school sometimes, even though the staff can perform the task you're asking, they may not understand why it's important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've told them to do it, and they can, but if, you're not, if they're not doing it when you're not there, they may mm -hmm. not find it valuable. Mm -hmm. Or again, like the the response effort might be too hard or too high, yeah. so they might be like, oh, yeah, I see this. it as a totally a concurrent operant arrangement. So staff effort, um, if they clearly can do it in your presence, then you leave, and they don't do yeah. it. There's a they have choices to make based on. So just like Pierre said, if it's too much effort for the reward, in other words, the learner's behavior does not reinforce their their performance, then it's not going to maintain. Or if the other contingencies set forth by the school district don't reinforce yeah. that, then then obviously they're discriminating. And I, I find it that um, sometimes you have to show the outcome of the learner's behavior and make it really salient to them how great the kid's doing and how it's less work for them in the long run. Right. Do you know what I mean? That's the hard part. It's easy to say. Right. But if you demonstrate it, show that the learner's behavior is reduced and their appropriate behavior is up and it's less work in the long run, they're not taking a beating, their life is easier, then then they it brings the distant consequence closer to them and then they're like, wow, okay, this could be. But even the problem with that is it's a delayed reinforcement. Yeah. Seeing the learner Seeing the learner do do well um, requ requires a lot of upfront effort and a very delayed response and how long it takes the learner to respond. So the immediate reinforcer is um, not there, yeah. right? So it's not a certain, and it's not certain either. Literally anything that's really hard to do that requires a lot of response effort, there are, people are always going to need to know the reason they <laughs> you're asking them to do it or else people, people are going to be rebellious. Yeah, I, I found that pushing back is... If you've been in a, if you've been in a school district, eventually, someone's going to say, "Do you think we should have a one to one?" It's it's on your shoulders. Sometimes you have enough data. Sometimes you don't. Maybe you've only been in a district two weeks, and there's just not enough data to support it one way or the next. So I now put it right back and say, "What's the time of the day, or what's the activity where you need the extra support?" Mm -hmm. And then that forces them to say, "Well, it's actually just during lunch." If there was a way that people could just get like. It real time feedback on their own behavior like a Fitbit, that would be pretty incredible. It would drive their performance. It's like a little device that um, you put on your belt and it measures your breathing. So the interesting thing is um, it, it can measure multiple things. So when you breathe in and out, if, if you're moving at a, at a more rapid rate and you're anxious, it'll, it'll notify you yourself if your breathing is getting too high in it, and then along with the ACT literature, makes you more mindful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of, it's kind of interesting. I was thinking there's a, there are a lot of implications with that, that it can monitor. So it's interesting if, if you had a learner have this device on that measures, it measures three variables. One of them is your breathing and how rapidly you're breathing. So if a learner had on the device and they were starting to breathe heavier and that was a precursor to a problem behavior, mm -hmm. it would be a perfect time sure. because Mark Bradley showed me that it synchronizes every five seconds and you're seeing on the iPad um, the graph and you can see if they're starting to breathe at a more rapid rate, yeah. you could then prompt the learner to ask for a break or something, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think that's big. Yeah. If, if meditation is about breathing and going back to your breathing and that which is a basic function and that catches it so before you have a behavior and a, and a behavior that's manifested um, by anxiety so to speak it's a circle explanation but you catch your breath going really high and then you you can prevent your 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 behavior from manifesting into something that that you regret later I don't mm -hmm. know.
I don't see why not. It's, it's all recursive behavior. I, I, I wish I could do that with Marlene, so I don't uh, regret things. <laughs> I can't even put it on me. No, no. <laughs> no, I meant for myself. The implications of that for employees and for for us for for our own self control, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Prevent impulsivity. N notify you and make it salient with a vibration that you're getting too anxious because it's measuring a, a clear observable function just like a galvanic skin response would be for measuring your perspiration rate for a lie detector mm -hmm. they're not always accurate but you're 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 able to measure your your breathing becoming too heavy which might be a precursor to some outburst right so it's kind of interesting it's a step man yeah it's definitely a step in the right direction in terms of self-monitoring yeah that's fantastic